Hi everyone, uh, my name is Evan, I'm a video game professor, and I'm also a designer and developer, and I also play a lot of pen and paper RPGs, and I'm currently running a game right now. Um, and as such, I've had to describe physical spaces to my players, which is something that's had to go on since RPGs and pen and paper have really been a thing. Um, the trouble is, is sometimes uh, having a physical board or, a, you know, minis is not really uh, convenient. You know, sometimes you're describing stuff over the internet to people and sometimes uh, you don't really want to, like, log into anything or make a profile. You just want to, like, open up a flat playing field and just start dropping stuff. And uh, that's basically what I've built here. So uh, this is the Squad, the super quick, useful, and dirty tabletop tool. It's free under the Creative Commons license. And basically, it's just been helpful for my team. And uh, maybe it could be helpful for you too, maybe not. Uh, and if it's not, uh, you use other things. I feel encouraged to <laughs> use other stuff. This is sort of a, it was useful for us, hope it's useful for you kind of deal. Um, okay, so uh, as you can see here, you get a grid using the arrow keys. You can kind of uh, rotate it. You can use uh, zero to decrease the size of the grid, basically to make it a smaller space and use nine to uh, increase the size of the grid, so basically make it larger. Uh, the grid will always correspond to these numbers, which are sort of added indefinitely. Um, and so once you have you know a grid the way you like it, so I uh, like mm, that. That's a good grid for me. Uh, you can go up here to this corner section and tell it how many feet or meters or whatever, how many units are in a, a square. So uh, defaults to 10. I'm going to say 10 right now just to make everything simple. And uh, cool. Okay, so that's that's our board right now. Uh, I'm gonna drop a character in. So you right click to open up this context menu and then you can go to, let's say character. Okay, character drops a hero. Uh, you can click and drag. You can also, once you've clicked them, use W, A, S, and D to kind of move them around and it's contextual based on the way you're facing. So A moves them forward now. Kind of makes sense with how you're looking at the board from the camera's perspective. Uh, okay, so we can go to our hero and rename them. Let's name it me, I'm Evan. I'll be the guinea pig. Uh, cool, so this is me. Um, now we know that each cube is 10 feet and let's say my movement speed is 30 feet per turn. Um, so we wanna be able to go 30 feet. Now uh, we can eyeball it from this perspective but I think a better way to do it is to go up to this corner and hit top. And top now gives us a top down isometric view. So we can say, okay, well it's actually a little bit too big right now, this is this would be 10 feet, this would be 20 feet, this would be 30 feet. We're actually looking at kind of like 35 feet right now. Um, so we can go up to the slider and this changes the initial uh, movement circle. That's close enough for me. Uh, this is not a completely exact, exact tool because I want to leave space for DMs, GMs, and keepers to sort of say, well, you're just outside or you're just inside. Um, I feel like when you make everything too granular that leads to a kind of unpleasant experience. Uh, great, cool, so we have uh, me and I'm here and let's go back to our normal view. Cool, which you can do by hitting top or reset. It, both of them does. Reset does a complete hard reset of no matter what else you've done. Um, okay, so uh, we can pick Evan up and move him around. You'll notice that uh, the grid coordinates are always highlighted where they are. Uh, great, okay, let's, uh, let's make a monster for our Evan to fight. So we go drop here an enemy. The enemy is a simple, you know, three cube system. Um, you can put it here, let's say it's an ogre. Um, great. Now, let's see what Evan can do. So uh, right now, again, you can you can kind of rotate around and see how you like to see it. Sometimes it's good to look top down, um, and we can see right now that like Evan can't reach the ogre with his movement speed. So we're gonna say Evan's gonna go here. But let's say Evan has I don't know an area of effect spell. Um, go here, and there's a bunch of different other things that we could spawn. So area effect cube, sphere, wall, etc. So let's say uh, Evan was going to cast something like, I don't know, Cloud of Daggers. Um, we can go here, we can name it Cloud of Daggers. And I think that's actually probably a little big for how Cloud of Daggers is supposed to be. So we use the mouse wheel to resize it. And this resizes on all aspects of it. Um, let's say we wanted the Cloud of Daggers, we're using some kind of like spell shaping or whatever. If you hold down the one key, and this goes for literally everything. So we could make, you know, we could do this with Evan too, but we'll do Cloud of Daggers. If you hold down the one key and use your mouse wheel, then you're just increasing it on the x-axis. If you're holding the two button, just does it on the y and three does it on the z. So you can basically take this and make it kind of any shape you need it to do. If you're not holding down anything, it just does a general resize of x, y, and z. Um, 
like I said, you can use WASD to move it around. You can click and drag to move it around. If you use Q and E, it rotates it. So you can see it better from the top view. Um, and if you want to de deselect it, deselect anything, you just click off of any object. Um, cool. So that's, that's the resizing. Uh, yeah. Okay. So Evan is now near the ogre. It's his second turn, let's say. Uh, let's say you put the, the cloud of daggers on the ogre. The ogre is now taking damage. Um, if we want to know how far we are from an object, we can just highlight our character. This only works on characters and put it over our object and draws this line. And in the corner right here, you can see that it tells you how far you are away from something. So we're about 10 feet away from the ogre. If someone, if we put some debris over here, let's say it was some fallen rocks, um, we could say, well, actually we are about 60 feet from the falling rocks, which would probably be about two movement cycles for us. Um, let's say we want to get a little bit more dynamic in our view. Uh, we can go here to free camera and use WASD to move around. Uh, C moves us lower, like crouching, and space moves us up, so we can get a kind of good look here. Um, once we have this in here, we don't want to have the free camera anymore, and it would be annoying to like rot you know, move the mouse over here, it would mess everything up. So if you hit R, it targets a lock on the camera, so you can just sort of move around and treat this like your normal camera system. Um, if you ever had the camera and an object highlighted at the same time and you wanted to lock the character, you could just lock the character like that. If, you're, if you ever click on something and it's not moving, this is, this is probably what you have clicked. Uh, cool. Um, yeah, so uh, let's go back and reset this. Uh, if you click on an object and hit delete, 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 or backspace, I guess, hit backspace, you, uh, you delete it from the map. Okay, so let's create a little scene. Uh, we'll have a character here, we'll have a rogue, we will have our, uh, let's say, a mage, and we will have a cleric. They are going to go into a space. I like to do this from the top usually. Uh, let's say it has a basic room, right? Um, when you click on a larger object like this, you can hover over it, but you'll see its actual anchors are towards the back. This goes for circular rooms as well. So we could say here, there's a room here. Let's say there's another room here. another room here and you can label these rooms as well so we could say that this is the like a, a lodging area this is right here this is a treasure room um, and we'll say that this is I don't know a kitchen uh, we could set up a wall here to let the players know that they're like on the inside of a space let's make the wall a little thicker we'll rotate it using uh, E and Q We'll drag it over to where we want it, and let's say it's right here, and we'll hold down the one button to make it a long, long wall. Um, make another wall real quick. Uh, pop that in right there. Make another wall. Another wall. Um, cool. So now we can go down to our top view, and we already sort of have the basics of a dungeon here where scale matters. Um, we can go here. We can say, oh, maybe there's like a you know kind of elongated fall fallen table here. There's a table. Label table. And uh, what else can we do? Uh, like a little pressure plate here. Um, I usually use these to signify exits. So this is the exit. And we'll say, okay, and here is a, uh, an enemy, right? We'll say here's the guard. Um, uh, and then, so you're probably looking at this and saying a couple things. One, this is super ugly. Totally, it's 100%. Uh, very pixelated and low poly. It, it's sort of intended to be. Um, and that's because I wanted this to run on WebGL and basically run in everything. It's only like 16 megs. It's it's very, very, very lightweight. Um, it's definitely not like to create a, a, an aesthetic, beautiful experience. But at the same time, you know, a lot of pen and paper role playing games are imagination based. And uh, I'm trying to stick with that. So this isn't a replacement for your imagination. This is just to figure out how far your rogue is from the guard. And if each square is 10 feet, you're about 80 feet away. 
Um, one other nice thing about this too is, uh, so some of my players like to fly, so we'll say that they can get up here, that's their movement, but additionally, you can hit Z and X to lower and raise them. Um, so if we're talking about our mage, that's actually probably the edge of their movement. So now we can keep track of them in the air, um, which is something that you know top-down views can't always do. And when they're in the air, they get that little line below them, so you can actually see exactly which spot that they're on. Uh, cool. Um, yeah, that's that's basically it. There are spell effects here. So if we were to cast like a fireball, we can see who's inside that fireball range. Um, and then one little t other tiny thing is one of my players suffers from vertigo, so I added in this little uh, vertigo button. So basically, when you rotate the camera around it doesn't animate it just cl clips right there because uh, they were having trouble uh seeing that so if you're a vertigo person uh sorry and also yeah you can click that button to make things a little bit easier i think that's basically it this is a little piece of software that was super helpful for me hopefully it could be helpful for you if it's not uh there are lots of great other alternatives out there this is definitely not the only way to do this especially if you can just use pen and paper um, but for me this is a pretty quick way to describe some space and keep track of some things for my players yeah, that's me. Uh, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoy the tool and uh, be cool. All right, take care.